guys, welcome back. This is Pamela from Pamela's Tarot Tales, and I wanted to do a walkthrough video um, and comparing the Star Tarot. Both versions are trimmed. This one was gifted to me in full trim by the fabulous Maria from Sacred Heart Tarot. She gifted this amazing bag that she has for sale. They are crocheted and they have a felt lining that makes it incredibly durable um, and wonderful and protects your cards. So go check those out. They're amazing. And then I bought a copy because I really have enjoyed using this deck. And I bought a copy for a friend of mine to gift, but I haven't gifted it yet. And I've spent a lot of time working with this deck to modify it um, because the cards come entirely too big. And um, they're just really not usable, and they, they're very distracting from the imagery. So I think it's important for me to have these trimmed. And a friend of mine had enjoyed, when I did a reading for her, this deck with the full trim. So I wanted to make sure that I gave her a gift. So anyway, the I decided that while a full trim is amazing and beautiful, I found that... The images, because there's so much information on the images, that writing on there was great, but I wanted it to kind of disappear. So I first wrote in on these with a uh, navy colored Sharpie, and it didn't really hold because the cards are so shiny that they rubbed off um, over time. So I've since gone through and put silver um, Sharpie oil-based pen on there and that seems to be doing the trick so far so anyway this was gifted to me in full trim and I love it I love it as full trim there's some cards I don't like but I thought well since I have an option that to gift to a friend and some of these cards are not I don't think they're easily recognizable as the card that they're designed to be so having that title is is helpful but what I found with this deck is that the cards, the majors had the name on the bottom, but the number on the top and the minors had the suit on the bottom, but, and the number on the top. So I found that if to trim them, I didn't want them to have opposite with the border on. So I've seen people trim it where they leave the top and the bottom, and that looks good too, but I, I really didn't care for it for what I wanted to gift her, and I found that it was still distracting for me. So I wanted to be able to do this in a way that was not distracting, but still gave the information that needed to be there. So I cut the... I used a paper cutter, um, a guillotine style paper cutter, to cut off the edges, and I used tape, masking tape, as a way to mask, like create a border where this card would butt up against, and I would cut all the sides, like all the long sides, and then all the short sides, and um, and then move the tape for the, you know, for the next one. I edged this one in this brilliant ink pad for kind of a, a matte silver. It's not super shiny because I did one coat, but I really like it with this. You'll see that the way that I trim this, you can ever so slightly, you know, you will be able to tell that it's reversed just because of the way that it's trimmed, but I figured she can always cut this off once she learns the deck if she wants to. But I didn't think the backs were bad enough that it would find it distracting or bothersome if you read reversals. So I use the, if I can find it, I used this corner rounder. This is the Kodomaru Pro and I ordered it from Amazon. It really wasn't expensive. It has a small, medium, and large uh, hole punches. And I find that this one is much better than my old punch by Fiskers that 
um, start shredding up the, the images and it gets stuck. It's really not a great one, but this one's really, really great. So I highly recommend that. So I wanted to make sure that I had all the numbers and everything written on there for her just to make it easier and to make it cohesive throughout the deck. And I first, but I wanted it to match in color. So I did some research and I was searching around and I found, you know, I was looking for an oil-based marker pen like this that was this kind of pinkish purplish color and I couldn't find one. So I tried, I found the perfect color with this Sharpie uh, paint pen, but the issue is that it's water-based. And so I would put it on and it would rub right off, which is not, not good for what we need, right? So I decided to go in and write with the silver that is oil-based, and then I wrote on top of it with the water-based. And that worked great because it doesn't rub off um, and it's very, very durable. And I've even tried to scratch it with my nails and it does not come off. So that's a great solution if you're looking for numbering in a certain color to write with an oil-based pen first and then um, do with a water-based pen over it. And that is great for cardstock that is super shiny that just... Nothing wants to stick to it. All right. So let's get looking at some cards. Also, this is a bag I have in process being made. I also crochet bags um, and doing that felt lining because I like it. And Maria's brilliant. And this one is a gift, and I've made this little charm to go on it, which I think is really sweet. And it says, made with love. So um, I think it'll be perfect. When I'm done with it, I have to, I'm going to make it a drawstring bag. So I hope this angle is okay. I'm trying something a little bit different to do this kind of video. But I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see what the images look like. You can see how I decided to trim it. I haven't seen anybody trim it this way. Um, so I thought, well, how cool is that? I can show people. And it'll be a great opportunity to do that before I ship it out. So I did use the small rounder on the corner. And you can see that Maria used the medium. And both look good. And then she also edged it in. She used a kind of a purpley. Uh, it's hard to see. but And I'm not sure which marker she used. I think it was a Winsor Newton. But I'm not certain about that. Okay, so I'm just going to do a flip through so you can see in comparison and how they look. I won't hold them all up, but I wanted you to see what it looks like with that border on there and without. And how I think it looks good either way. What I did go through and do is write down, if you can see that, in that sharp in that oil based pen on all the numbers with the silver on the full trim because I needed something there so I've enjoyed using this deck um, there's some cards I've uh, I don't particularly care for, but I think it works. I mean, I didn't have a deck that had a lot of bright colors in it, um, and this kind of um, imagery. So I, I'm really grateful that it was gifted to me. Now, I don't have the book that comes with it, but the the set that I bought is the book set, and I will be gifting that to my friend so that she can have the book because I hear amazing things about it and I'm actually going to contact the creator and see if I can get just the book. But I've enjoyed really working with this deck intuitively. I think it has some really beautiful things and it has a lot, um, a really nice voice to it. And I have to agree if you've seen 
Tom Benjamin's review, and I'm not really writing a review about this deck. I'm just kind of giving some thoughts while I show how I trimmed and modified it because I really like deck mods. Um, but I do have to say I watched Tom Benjamin's video on this, and he had some really good points that I do agree with with the miners, but... Um, and this won't be for everybody's taste, for sure. But it's definitely for my friend, which I'm going to gift this to. And I never thought it would necessarily be for me. But it goes to show you once you're given a gift and if you play with it and you're open, it might just be for you. It might open up a new channel, a new way of looking at things. And so even if you're not person who loves rainbows and bright colors <laughs> you know there's still something really pretty awesome about this deck so I'll flip through a little bit faster but you can see how nice it is to have that on there instead of just the symbolism that I wrote AW which works great for me um, but considering I'm not sure for my friend what she would like and I wasn't comfortable making that decision at the time and I thought this was an awesome solution and they look fantastic I think they look really really good and I don't mind that they're a little bit handwritten um, the color maybe not quite matches I mean it matches pretty darn well but I don't find anything glaring or distracting about that being written on there in either case either this one or this one these are some of the cards that I'm not so stoked about. It's like, really? So let me know what you guys think if you um, are digging this deck, if you're liking the way that I've modified it, if you were contemplating mod modifying it but found it difficult because of the top bottom issue. I, you know, I think this is a great solution. Well, I think both of them really bring out the imagery. I think the original with the borders, um, which is great as well, but the borders were so big that it really shrunk in the imagery and you couldn't really see it very well. It got lost. It, it diminished it. And, it. and I think that's unfortunate that that was published that way. Um, I don't think that that was the creator's intention. I'm not positive about that, but um, I've seen a lot of people really cut, chop those borders off.
Oops. I don't know where my queen went. Oh, there she is. I got off somehow. And to compare them to a uh, traditional size, let me see if I can find. Um, so here's my Darkness of Light Tarot, which is a pretty standard size deck. The partial trim. A little bit shorter, a little bit thinner. It's a nice size. This one has become more of a poker size, you know, playing card size. And I have to admit, it is a little bit harder to shuffle this one um, just because the card stock is pretty thick and it's got that gloss. And so it's a little bit stiff. I haven't shuffled this one yet because I, I really wanted to leave it in order for her. But it's not bad. It's not bad. This is not too bad to shuffle. I, it doesn't deter me from using it. Another one of those cards that I don't absolutely love. All right, so that's your walkthrough of two modified Star Tarot. Um, and that's the Star Tarot by Kathy McClellan, I think. And this is the, it's a big giant box, which is why I'm making her, I mean, it's a nice box. It's a shipper box, red Feather, I think is their publishing. Um, and you can see where the cards were. They had it divvied up in two piles. And they did fit all the way over. And so these cards were huge. Um, but, you know, I like these boxes. Nice. I mean, they're nice enough. They look good on the shelf. But I don't find them very practical for using. Um, and when I don't have something that's practical for using, I find it as a deterrent and I don't end up using it. Uh, particularly. So I like to take things out of that big boxes. Um, so that's why I'm making her a really custom bag to go with it. And these will be, I will also be selling these in my shop. I'm building a Etsy shop. So check them out. If you're looking for these, message me and I'll be happy to make you one. All right. Thanks for watching you guys. I've enjoyed doing this walkthrough. I hope you find it useful and I hope you have a great day. And this is Pamela with Pamela's Tarot Tales.